Hey guys, I'm going to start this video by sharing a very painful experience. I lost the game, I think yesterday, somebody rated under 1300, and I lost in 11 moves, and it's in the Danish Gambit, right? But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is how I use this to grow and to get better. Okay, so if you're a Danish player, pay close attention. If not, pay close attention to the method that I'm about to show you. Okay, so first I'll take you through the game. So it's the full Danish, right? They capture all three pawns. Uh, so White's e-pawn has basically made this journey and has played all five, sorry, all four of the first four moves, right? And then suddenly he's gone. So in return for, now that we've won one, one pawn back, in return for our two extra gambited pawns, we've given up two pawns, but we have two developed pieces, and that is quite a good deal on paper. Um, the question is, can white convert this advantage? Now, I'll show you how the game works. So knight f6, and I don't think this is one the, the most usual continuation from black, but it's by no means uncommon. Um, obviously, it's clearing a, a minor piece, getting ready to castle, etc. Black wants the castle as soon as possible, right? However, he is kind of putting himself in the, uh, the danger line to some degree. Um, also, this, this knight is, appears to be attacking a pawn, okay? So I play the very natural e5. I've played this 100 times in the Danish, hitting the knight. And now my opponent comes out with bishop to b4. And here I found myself unsure what to do. And I know that, that knight d2 is very common in these situations. The machine will very often say knight c3 is better, but you are blocking off your bishop if you put your knight on here. And sometimes, you know, this bishop wants to attack g7, which is undefended since this bishop flew out, right? So in practice, knight coming to d2 um, very often can pair up with this guy, tends to work out better. And I am finding that I'm... I think there are very good reasons to trust the player's database more than the machine because the machine is looking a long way down the line and based on perfect play, which you don't get in the real world. All right, let's look at what actually works in practice, far more important. So, now my opponent plays a knight in, in here, and I'm thinking, I, I, can't, I, I can't remember what to do, you know? This knight's pinned on d2. Um, I know that there's some kind of tricky line here, but I couldn't remember what it was, okay? So what I played was, let's go safe, right? Bishop to b2, adding a defender to the knight. Now, this is a third defender, obviously, but it's the, the important thing is it becomes the first defender, because if minor piece takes, minor piece takes, and then if he takes back, he just loses a piece, right? As things stand, I've got two defenders, two attackers, two defenders, but... Problem is that defender number one is my queen and defender number two is my king. So uh, I've only got one option to capture. So if takes here, I'm actually better off moving the king and not even recapturing because then I'm just going to lose a queen for a minor piece or even two minor pieces. It's just not worth it. Um, my opponent now plays d5, which is correct. Um, I drop my bishop back. I could here have captured en passant with e takes d6. But I don't. I drop my bishop back to safety, right? My Rebora, my opponent here from the Philippines, only used 20 seconds of his game. Now outflies the queen, adding another threat against this knight and also targeting g2. I try and defend with my knight. Okay, queen takes g2. I play rook to g1, thinking, oh, okay, okay, might be back on familiar territory now, because um, I know there's, there's a pattern here. But no, not at all. Queen takes f2, checkmate. All done and dusted. Pie in the face for yours truly. But that's not the point of what I wanted to show you. Yes, I forgot my theory, right? Um, but more importantly, it wasn't that I forgot so much what move to play. It's that I forgot why. So let's flip over now to Lee Chess, okay? And I have... In my Danish study, which is now extensive, 45 lines, and I've moved these example games into a different study, right? We have a line here for bishop b4, knight f6. 
switch that off. All right. Um, <clears throat> so here, here's the opening. Okay, there. Now, this isn't what was played in the game, right? Um, what was played in the game was knight out here. I attack the knight, then the bishop comes out. Okay. However, bishop out here, knight d2, correct. Knight out here, pawn e5, correct. And if the knight comes in, this is actually a mistake from black. Okay, and this is the exact position that we had. Okay, so you can get into it more than one way. And the point is for me to understand the position, not to um, remember the moves. Right, because understanding the position will put me in much better stead than um, just trying to memorize everything, which, you know, I'm not going to do at my age. It's just not going to happen. Okay, so what is the move here? Right, the best move here for white is the stunning bishop takes f7 check. The best move in chess. Now, according to the computer, black's slightly better. According to real life, white wins 61% of games from this position, okay? So, if the king should take, okay, that now white is better. White is actually better because we now have queen b3 with a fork on the king and the bishop, right? If they throw in d5, we cut drum on then, okay? King has to move now. We grab the bishop. We're attacking the knight. Happy days. Uh, knight might take the pawn, so what? Doesn't matter. We're plus one already. We have castling rights. We are not down in material. Well, we're down a pawn, right? But it's all in white's favor. Yes, if you're stockfish, you'll survive quite well here as black. But if in the real world, this situation has been seen five times and white's won every single time. Yeah? So there you go. So that's one line. Now, I have another line that I prepared earlier, which is similar. Bishop comes out with check, knight d2. We know this, right? Knight comes out, hit the knight, knight comes in. What's the move? Bishop takes f7 check. Now, the best move, in fact, the only move really for, for black is to move the king here. And if we do that, okay, then we play, well, the, the engine wants you to play knight f3, right? But we're not an engine. So go away, fish, right? We play bishop to a three, pinning this bishop on the knight, okay? And so this bishop is pinning our knight on the king. So we pin this one. So he, he can't legally capture there, right? If he takes here, we can take that with the queen and this, this one's pinned, right? So they, they could take and then we take the knight, right? Now, if the king takes our bishop, queen b3, again, forks both of those. And we're in a similar situation, right? We've got two minor pieces against two minor pieces. We are not even a pawn down in this. Yes, we are one pawn down in this, in this situation. But we can castle, black can't, etc. We're okay. Um, so if the bishop comes here, just slide the king over. And then they take, and again, we fork. And again, the machine has black slightly better, but I'm not too bothered about the machine, okay? King comes back here, we grab the bishop, and you know, I think most of us would take probably white in this situation. Yes, we have lost castling rights now, but we have activity, we have space, black has zero development completely. And in reality, from here, white wins 56% against 44, okay? So, now, that's, that's all very interesting, but there is also a wrinkle. Because we also have, there's another line for knight f6, bishop b4 check, which is the move order that I think we saw in the game. Now, either full Danish, here we go, right, full Danish. Knight f6, that's what we saw in the game, okay? And the correct move is indeed e5. Now, if the bishop comes out here, right, this is different to what we just saw. Because we have this tension on the knight, okay, and we're in check, okay. So, this is not the move. Interestingly, this is not the move. And the reason why 
is because if we just block there, this bishop doesn't have to do anything. It can stay there, right, with that pin, yeah. So if I do that, bishop stays there. And then the best move for black now is d5. d5, and now black is uh, distinctly better. Okay, if we go ahead and capture the, the knight now, we have d takes c4. We've just lost our bishop, you know. Um, so e takes d6. If we capture on passant, then we have queen takes d6. And, and black's winning, you know, like 62% from here. And this is, this is really weird. So, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm going, okay, well, that's what's wrong with that. So the best move here is actually bishop to c3. And the point is, we've got this tension on the knight, right? We can't allow this. And this is the point, I think, I think, from this situation. Now, if you're a Danish player and you understand this better than me, please, and you can explain it, please do explain it. But now if, if they push this, you see, we have this tension between the bishops, okay? So now, for example, e5 is a blunder. Because if e5, bishop takes b4, and white is winning. They're looking at our minor piece, we're looking at their minor piece, we're, we're, we are a bishop up at this point in time. Well, we're not. Yes, we are, we are. Yeah, we are actually a bishop up. We've still got all of our minor pieces on the board, okay? And that's the difference. If we play knight out here, right, then our opponent has options. d5 is an option. Knight e4 is an option. But if we see this, I mean, knight e4 is actually the most common move played. But if we see this, again, we have bishop f7. Okay? King takes, etc. Right? So this, to me, is really, really fascinating. It's why... Why is that move? I mean, e even even with this, we're okay, you know. And, but that's what I forgot, right? The point is, what I forgot was, okay, look for when your queen has options of coming out to various squares. Always be open to this. So, what what did I play in the game? Um, I played the timid bishop back to c1, right? I just undeveloped my own bishop because I forgot what to do and I didn't understand. So here's the point. The point, first point, is always be ready for this. Always be on the lookout for this. And it doesn't matter what opening you're playing, you know, this, this, this brilliant, beautiful move appears in so many different um, positions, right? That is the move to play if the knight comes in, okay? But otherwise, actually, the best move is this. Let's resolve the tension, make them take it. We take back with the knight, and we're okay. You know, we're not too bad here. Computer doesn't like it, but white does win. Still 55% against 39%. So forget the computer. Switch the computer off. Doesn't matter. Right? So I think I just think that was really interesting. So the point of me going over this this morning, yeah, yes, it hurt to lose that game. But I was actually kind of dreaming about why did I lose that game and, and I couldn't figure it out. So that's when you go back to your study. You say, okay, where did I screw up? Okay, well, you know, it, it wasn't actually that bad. It wasn't actually that, even here, it wasn't that bad, right? Because I forgot about this. I had this as a resource. I forgot that it existed. And I've now gone over it. And I've looked at this now like 12, 15 times today. And I've explained it to you in a video. So hopefully it's getting through the, uh, the rock in there. And in future, we'll know to play this. But there you go. Um, fascinating stuff. But, and, and also just this, this, this idea of, of the bishop here as well, you know, as an alternative. When you've got this tension going on, you think, oh, my opponent could do this. How bad is that? Then just, you know, resolve this. And th then they can't do that because you simply win a piece, right? And then you're staring each other out. So fascinating, I thought. Um, if you've got any more insights that you can add to this, if you're a Danish player in particular, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later.